So it is 7.34 p.m. on Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board for, to order. I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Um, Venkat Holy. Here. Uh, Dan Riccadelli, have you been able to join us? <coughs> He's in the waiting room. All right. Yes. Dan, want to make sure you were with us? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, just having a little technical difficulty this this not, evening. Not a worry. Um, and Ms. Hoffman will not be joining the board this evening. Um, for the town, Rick Valorelli, our administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Valorelli. And also joining us, uh, Vincent Lee. Here. Vinny, good to have you. Um, and then appearing uh, for 39 Woodside Lane, uh, Mary O'Connor. I'm here. Good evening to all. Good, Good evening. evening. And appearing for 1315 Melrose Street, uh, James Fleming. Present. Good to have you with us as well. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a physical publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda and as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. Um, I will promptly do. Um, so I'm gonna skip ahead to the two um, to the hearings uh, directly and I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the hearing for 39 Woodside Lane. Um, uh, Mary O'Connor who's here on behalf of the applicant is here to uh, request a further continuance and I would just ask her to explain the nature of the uh, request. Certainly. Thank you Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, my client uh, was contracted when meeting with the town engineer learned uh, that there was a an easement on the property that was not contained in the deed. Uh, the town engineer had a 1954 plan that shows an easement on the property. Uh, so this was indeed a, a, a unwelcome surprise to my client, uh, and it impacts uh, where the proposed addition is. So uh, we would need a continuance to uh, address that issue. All right, thank you. Um, you and I had spoken earlier, and I believe we were looking at a, a, a date of December 20th. Yes, that would be fine. And we understand that uh, the decision would not be, be done within the 90 days, and we, we agreed to the extension. Okay. And I will um, I will send you paperwork on the extension. I, I have asked sure. uh, um, the applicant, if they would, uh, we would basically under law, we have 90 days from the date that the hearing is open, which expires on December 26th. So we're requesting an extension until um, January 31st, uh, 2023. So uh, we will, I will follow up and get that in writing. Um, so with that, 
I would look for a motion to continue the public, the special permit hearing for 39 Woodside Lane um, until December 20th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Thanks. Second. Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Rigardelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on the special permit for 39 Woodside Lane. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You're welcome. And, you and thank you to all the members of the public who came out um, for this. I apologize that uh, this is, we're not continuing, we're not, <clears throat> excuse me, discussing this case this evening, but we will be on December 20th. Uh, with that, I will move to the next item on our agenda, uh, which is docket number 3721, 1315 Melrose Street. Um, this uh, was a case that was looking to do an attic addition and uh, stay within the existing footprint of the property. Um, and this, essentially the, the nature of the request revolved around the availability of usable open space um, in the yard. And this particular case was um, discussed between the inspectional services department um, and the planning department and uh, in terms of what jurisdiction the board has um, in light of the, there was a case, a, a Supreme Court case in Massachusetts, uh, the Bell Alta, which sort of redefined how existing nonconformities are handled by zoning boards. And so um, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Valarelli, uh, the board's administrator, if he could explain a little bit of the background of, as to sort of what um, has been going forward at, at Inspectional Services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so there was a collaboration between the Building Commission of Planning and myself, and um, the bottom line was look no further than 8.1.3a, which says alteration, reconstruction, extension, or structural change to a single or two family residential structure that is completely within the existing foundation walls does not increase the non-conforming nature of said structure. So no increase in the nonconformity, um, no need to satisfy any open space issues that did not exist originally. And um, the bottom line was look no further than 813A. Uh, and that's how we're gonna handle this sort of case going forward. And so the determination of the, um, of the zoning official for the town of Arlington was that because this property complies with 813A, there is no um, extension of the existing nonconformity and therefore a vote of the board is not required to increase the nature of the um, nonconformity. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. So this is a by right permit. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. If I could try to, it seemed, just as people watching me will, will, will might are, are sort of missing a piece that we all have in our minds, but this is always a two-step process. There first has to be an extension of the existing nonconformity, and if there is, then we would issue a Section Six finding if it was warranted, saying in effect that the increased nonconformity was not worse for the neighborhood than the nonconformity that already existed. If you don't get past that first step, you don't have any reason to get to the second step. And the first step is within ISD's jurisdiction, as our opinions have been recognizing now for some time. And so ISD having decided there's no extension of nonconformity, there's no occasion for us to reach the question about whether if there had been, it would be worse for the neighborhood than, the, than what already existed. So as a result of that, there's nothing, there's literally nothing for us to do because the predicate for our jurisdiction doesn't exist. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the board on what, this, what we're doing? Seeing none. Um, so, Mr. Fleming, with this, um, so the board essentially has no jurisdiction in this matter, and the permit is available by right uh, from inspectional services. So, um, uh, but because this was, is in front of us and um, you know it's advertised as such, uh, we would need to have you uh, withdraw the application from us. Um, 
which we would then vote on and then that would close out the, the hearing from our end. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 I, so, I mean, what else am I going to say? Do I say, it's always say no. Uh, uh, can I, for my own clarity, this yeah. is, this is something that has always been there and ISD is realizing this, this is, like, does, does something change in state law? So there was a decision on a case in Brookline, Bell Alta versus Brookline, um, which dealt with how boards of appeal can interpret nonconformities and what they're allowed to what they're allowed to do with nonconformities and what they're not allowed to do with nonconformities. And essentially it, it sort of broadened um, the board's discretion. So it as, as Mr. Hanlon, it's a there's now um, a two-part process. The look the zoning ordinance official uh which in the town of in most towns and in, in the town of arlington is the the uh, building commissioner um they would if there's a proposal where there's an existing nonconformity that is being modified that they make a determination whether or not um that whether this increases the intensity of the nonconformity and if they make a determination that it does not then that they are allowed to proceed with review of the application and issue the building permit by right. If there is a determination by the built by the uh, zoning official that there is in fact an intensification, then it uh, then it has to go before the board of appeals, and the board of appeals has to make uh, what we refer to as a section six determination, where the board has to find that the the change in the nonconformity is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconformity. Um, and that's so what the, we were planning on doing this evening, but um, the zoning official okay. has changed the opinion. Okay, so this is relatively recent case law then? This is relatively recent, yes. Okay, uh, in that case, I would like to uh, request a withdrawal of our application. You can go do it by right. All right, so we have a request from the applicant uh, to withdraw the uh, special permit application for 1315 Melrose Street. And the request is being made because uh, the inspectional services has made the determination that this can be approved by right without action of the board. Um, so I would move that the board uh, accept uh, the request uh, without, uh, without prejudice. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second, I don't know, that was the second, babe. I beg your pardon? That was the first. Is there any question from the board as to what we're doing? No. Nope. Okay, so this is a, a vote of the board to um, accept the withdrawal of the special permit application for 1315 Melrose Street as uh, without prejudice as the application will be uh, reviewed by right by inspectional services. So with that, a vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And that is accepted. So uh, Fleming, I appreciate your uh, going through the process with us. Um, and I, although yeah, we will not be issuing you a special permit, you will uh, proceed directly with inspectional services. We thank you for your time. That's good. And thank you. You're very welcome. So that is the end of the public hearings that were scheduled for this evening. Um, we'll now go back to uh, the administrative items section. Um, <clears throat> so there are three administrative items before the board tonight. Uh, the first is item number two on our agenda, the approval of the meeting minutes from October 25th, 2022. Uh, these were well-crafted and prepared by our own Mr. Valarelli, distributed to the board for questions and comments. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the written minutes for October 25th, 2022? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from October 25th, 2022? So moved. Thank you, second. Mr. Second from Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to approve the minutes. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Ms. Hoffman is not with us. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. Uh, brings us to item three on our agenda, which is the approval of the written decision for 13 Edith Street. 
Uh, this is a decision that was prepared by our Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments, and then a final version issued this afternoon. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the written decision for 13 Edith Street? Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 13 Edith Street? So moved. Second. Mr. Hanlon. And the second from Mr. DuPont. Thank you. Vote of the board to approve the decision. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Hawley? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ms. Hoffman being absent. That is approved. That brings us to item number four on our agenda, which is the approval of the decision for 24 Langley Road. This was a decision that was written by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments, and a final version issued this afternoon. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the written decision for 24 Langley Road? Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 24 Langley Road? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. And a second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to approve the written decision. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye, Ms. Hoffman being absent. That, uh, the, that written decision is approved. Um, but that is all of the items that were on our agenda this evening. Um, I did want to uh, review some of the upcoming meetings. Um, so we do have a meeting scheduled for next Tuesday night, November 22nd, uh, which is the continuation of the comprehensive permit application for 1021-1027 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, at that time, the board will be um, voting to continue. We're looking to continue to December 6th. Um, essentially, it is taking uh, the board and the town longer than anticipated to retain consultants to review the application on the board's behalf. Uh, the actual contracts are being signed this week. And so there's just not enough time for the consultants to thoroughly review the information and provide information back to the applicant in time for the applicant to be able to respond um, by the 22nd. So uh, we, we're asking to them and they have a, <clears throat> they will agree to uh, continue to December 6th on that. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, <clears throat> if a person found himself unable to attend that meeting where all yeah. we're actually doing is continuing, yeah. is that the one meeting that you can miss without having, without being disqualified for the rest of the proceeding? That is a very intriguing question. Um, I would hope not. I might find myself in that position. <laughs> so I, I am, it's not purely abstract. Okay. Uh, let me follow up on that. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Moore. Could I ask a, an informational question, even though I'm not a board member? You may ask a question, certainly. Uh, right now, that's the only item scheduled for that meeting. Is there a the, chance other items may be added to the schedule between now and then? Um, so the only thing that might show up on that meeting would be the approval of the minutes from tonight's meeting. Um, I think that's the only outstanding piece of business that would occur. Um, but I think it would be more likely that we would just continue that to December 6th and do, do nothing else on the night of the 22nd. Okay, so there's no public uh, other, uh, I, I, I'm not that familiar with the public notification of meetings issues to be mm -hmm. published in the paper. I assume that a week out, nothing can be added to an agenda basically, other than a thing like you just mentioned, right. minutes approval. Right. So any hearing that any new hearing that is being proposed has to be advertised um, twice in the paper of record, at least one week apart and at least one week before the okay. hearing. So that backs you out about three weeks. That that fill that that answers my question. Thank you, Mr. Trim. Oh, you're welcome. But like any other board, um, if there are items that are of a you know that are meeting items that are not hearings, those is just 48 hour notice. Um, so December 6th, there will be a second, uh, there will be a new hearing on the 6th as well. Um, Mr. Alarelli is working with the applicant to complete uh, the information and expects to have uh, materials on, on that hearing for us later on. Um, 
Mr. Valerelli, are there any hearings currently scheduled for December 20th, apart from the continuation now of 39, uh, 39 Woodside? Just the continuance, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, and so that's our, our schedule through the end of the year. Any any questions on that? Seeing none. Um, I will go ahead and close the meeting. So thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank thank uh, Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, Kelly Linema, Marissa Lau, and Mike Champa for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. It is our understanding that the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the ZBA website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank Second. You. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Rigardelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. The chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. Thank you, guys. Good, Good to guys. see you. Good we'll night. See you all in a week. Good night, everyone. Good night. Take care. Good night, Good night everybody. Bye.